Hey, wanna get really angry? Queen of Pain is one of those classic heroes that are pretty much the exact same as they were in 2011. She has a slow, she has a blink, she has a scream, she has an ult. But what's really disappointing is that all through the years she still played the exact same too. And that's boring. You take her mid, you farm an orchid, you gank. You take her off lane, you farm an orchid, you gank. Let's do something crazy. Let's play Quop as a support. Quop support can roam at level 2, can initiate without a blink, can even die without much loss. But the thing is, if we play to her strengths, will she even? The thing with a Quop is that everybody loves to counter you, everybody loves playing against the Quop. They pick silences, they pick pucks and rickies and drowls, they pick tanks, they pick Huskar, Wraith King, Medusa, they pick hardcore burst, TA, Tiny, Lena. And what's great is that none of it matters. They see a Quop, they assume she's core, they put everything into destroying her, and then she goes support. On the flip side, even without items, Quop still counters the same heroes, the top tier of which is Timbersaw and Clockwork and Slark, and anyone that counters Slark is a good pick in my eyes. The first two are countered by Quop's 1300 range disengage, and the Slark is countered by that, and the 900 instant damage Quop can deal without needing to select them. Below him are the heroes specifically a roaming Quop beats. At level 2 you have a 15 second 200 damage slow and the means to get to them from 300 range away. Any weak mid laner crumbles to that, as well as a select few weak safe laners even with a support nearby. And don't worry, a support needing to deny his carry is all already useful enough. Later on in the game, our role morphs into like a counter to their supports and backliners, blinking and bursting their dazzle or their lich, even their sniper really. But Eric, what if I die? Well, that's where the magic comes in. As with every only way to play guide I've done, you can find this one in-game as well as on YouTube, the link is in the description, and the skill build goes like this. Oh. Oh, oh uh, yeah, I should probably explain. Shadow Strike is roaming support Quop's bread and butter, technically. Technically, it's a whopping 500 damage nuke at level 4. But then again, Sandstorm is an 8,000 damage nuke if you really want to go that way. Shadow Strike is a 20% slow at level 1 that fades to 0 uh, through 15 seconds. At 7 seconds in, for example, the slow is only about 4.7%. But the beauty of it is its spammability. At level 1, there is only 1 second of downtime in between casts. Shadow Strike deals an instance of initial damage and then after every 3 seconds it deals its damage over time instance. And to really dominate, we pair this up with... Blink. Blink is a blink. It blinks you anywhere in blink range up to 1300 units. That's further than anti mages blink and blink dagger. The thing to think with blink is the cooldown is 15 seconds at level 1, and after casting it into 5 enemy heroes, you'll know how long 15 seconds can feel. In one early game clash, you will probably only have the one cast, so you have to decide. Do you use it to get in or out? My personal preference is to get out with it. If you're in Shadow Strike range, you're already in attack range, and if you're not in Shadow Strike range yet, they're not going to be running away. So just walk to them. You can also blink after diving towers to get a few more hits and then disjoint the tower attacks that would normally hit you. Scream of Pain is the classic AoE nuke. We max it second because it costs a lot of mana and technically to one target, Shadow Strike does more damage and has more utility. Scream of Pain has a 7 second cooldown, hits and visit units, hits units in the fog of war, pretty typical stuff, and it ults a lot more of the same. The difference is Sonic Wave is pure BKB piercing damage. And it can kill couriers. Speaking of couriers, there's clearly something very, very wrong with me. Why do I do this? Why do I take a perfectly good support like Winter Wyvern and send her mid? Why do I take a perfectly good mid and make her a support? Well, um, because it wins. And if it's stupid, but wins, it's not stupid. Start off the game with 8 tangos, a blightstone and a ward or a courier. The game plan leaving the fountain is to be the queen of harassment. With zero armor and no extra set of tangos, your harassment probably comes back at you and gives the clash around a net zero result. Early game pick up boots to keep the constant pressure up and swing over for an urn. In its current form it gives armor, mana, regen and a few stats but as this extremely aggressive early game support, the active is what you're buying it for. And keep a TP handy. Your core items would be treads and blade mail. To you oldies who have been here since the necro guard, you'll remember that I spent minutes singing blade mail's praises when on an int hero, it gives 32 damage and extremely useful armor. And with the ultra aggression from offensive blinks, blade mail is a deterrent from them hitting back. Imagine a troll warlord or an ursa on 50 HP because you've just nuked him down after blinking in offensively. He turns around after a blink in, perma bashes you and life steals all the way back up while killing you instead. Blade mail is an insurance so that does not happen. After that we stock up on support items, gradually also completing two braces for our Rotorators. At this point with the 10 strength and 300 HP talents, we're over 2000 HP. We're pretty much a better frontliner than a core co-op with more farm. Situationally, get a 4 stuff, it extends blink range, but it, I would mostly use it as a good way out to salvage a bad blink in. You can also get a solar crest, orchid, 
Veil. And really, whenever you feel like you can, you can just slide back into the core quap role. But now you're a core quap who just happens to have 1500 more health than normal, and that can only be a good thing. From the get-go, you are as powerful as you need to be without a single last hit you can immediately locate the weakest enemy lane and go gank it. Considering you're roaming, you don't actually have a lane so when the enemy doesn't see you on the lane, they're not automatically worried. This also means we can approach from any angle. Usually that'd be walking in from the side or behind, saving blink as an escape. With urn charges, there's usually no need to heal yourself. A trip back to base is faster for a quap than the average hero. Heal your allies who don't actually have the luxury of leaving. Or just save the charges and use them aggressively. What's great is that there's no pressure to push or take objectives. You can set the pace to whatever you want. Laning phase is where you shine, so keeping laning phase going as long as possible gives you pretty much more overall. After laning, your job is to get into the back lines and disrupt their squishies. You can jump in first, or you can jump in to counter-initiate after they all crowd on an ally to triangulate that perfect sonic wave. But my three favorite things about this entire build is that it's simple, short, and it's so out there that you might even just win a game in the time it takes the enemy to comprehend what's happening. People don't like change in Dota unless it's done by Ice Frog or a pro. I assume you're not Ice Frog, so be that pro. So, uh, unlike the last guide, this guide was brought to you by Michael Bauer, Gore Rocker, Leonard, Foxy Fucking Loxley, Free Kill, Chris, Sir 1996, Pearson and Mewborn, Locus Kukon, Mr. Magic aka The Tones, The Infamous Logan Van Dusen, Mr. Revolute, Hubert Motherfucking Camadale, The Crime Member Angel Vase, Shoot, Shadow Sweetheart, Jeff Miller, Jacob Miller, No Relation, I Assume, Rogue Mifle, Turd Ferguson, Michael Robb, Kaiser Wilhelm, Oslovic, Shiva's Guard, uh, uh, Red, English Breakfast Tea, Snuggly Wagons, Litho, Klamath, Yebus McGee, Soranog, Surprise Fatty, now part of the $5 Club, I1, XD, Christian Rudder, XZ, Milocot, Booty Soufflé, Scar, Apache Mari wearing a head where neck where nicknamed as Hackcraster, Saintly Motherfucking Swordfish, Zwok, Tsunami Shadow, Punith P, Rhett Mitchell, Aegis, Herpa Derpa Duda Derp, Swaggity Booty Boo 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 Pro S, Cody F, Fortunate Hive Dice, Slap a Leg Lamb on the side for it, Redless, I am one with the men on Kazoo, Kerosene, 15, just the number 15 I guess, Aonin, Comrade Raface, Xenopranambra, Chestnut, and the rest didn't pay enough to get me to read out their name. It's very awkward. This is pretty much me just shaming them now. Look at them all. Ugh. Look at that one. Ugh. Nah, I'm kidding, dude. I'm kidding! <laughs>